why we carry PRS guitars. Okay, anyway. So why do we carry Paul Reed Smith guitars? Obviously, they're fantastic guitars, and we'll get into that in a minute, but why do we as a shop, as casino guitars, why do we carry PRS guitars? It, um, I am a Fender and a Gibson like diehard when it comes to electric guitars. I've always, it's just what I've always been. I started off almost as a Les Paul guy, then I got to play a real 61 Strat at some point in my life, and that was sort of it for me, then I was like Fender all the way. And, and it made touring a lot easier too because it's not as heavy as a giant Les Paul. But I've always been, I love the history of Fender. I love the history of Gibson. I, there's nothing cooler than them. And I kept seeing these PRSs around when I was younger and they just didn't appeal to me. Not, not at all. And so finally I got, got, kept getting older and finally I played one by accident. And I was really frustrated because they're really good. They're, they're, they play easily. They're intonated pretty much out of the box. They set them up perfectly. The action's great. They sound amazing. There's, there's no work with them. With the minute I, I picked up one, and this was a core model I got to play for the first time. I was, it, it was, it was in, impeccably built. It was interminably upsetting because I was like, I am a purist of these historical brands. And there's this weird looking thing with this beautiful top in my lap. Um, with this funny headstock that doesn't make sense to me. I can't put a tuner on it, but it plays great. And it has this unique sound that I wasn't quite sure what to think of, except for that it was good. Um, and so, and then a few years went by and I was like, okay, I ignore that. It was like a bad guilty moment. I'm still a Fender Strat guy. Then, you know, we're, we're within the guitar shop and then I meet this funny guy that works at PRS. His name's Clay. He's... He's the impresario brand ambassador of their universe for them in some ways. And he talked to me about the guitars. And I was like, you know, let, let's talk about it. Maybe we should bring these into the guitar shop. It's, um, I don't want to, but maybe we should because I had this sinking feeling from when I played them years ago. And so we agreed and we got some in and it and they're all, they're all good. The SCs were good. The CEs are good. The S2s are good. Not my cup of tea necessarily. Um, but the SEs for $4.99, that's what was making me even more upset because I love, I absolutely love Fenders and I love Gibsons and Epiphones. And then there's this $499 thing with a funny headstock with pretty wood on it that plays perhaps better than some of these things that I love. Sounds different. It's not, it's not better because it doesn't sound like a Strat. It doesn't sound like a Les Paul. It's its own thing. And, um, and it's just, it's built well and it's, it, their setup is great. The, there's no issues. I've had one issues of the hundreds of PRSs we've gone through. Um, not tens of thousands, just hundreds. Um, uh, we're not that big. Um, but it's, um, there was a truss rod that wasn't on it. That was it. Truss rod cover. The truss rod was there. It'd be weird if it wasn't, but that was it. And they, they sent me like five truss rod covers the next day. But, um, and then so I was like, okay, this is, this is a good relationship. We're going well so far. And let's, let's go up to see the factory. And so we, Derek and I hopped in the car. We had our bag full of cameras and, and our, you know, our wallet full of cash to buy more guitars or whatever. It doesn't work that way. But, um, but we, we showed up at the, the factory. And, I mean, they roll out the red carpet, which is funny because we're not. We're just a small independent shop down here in North Carolina. And they have their head of production spends the entire day with us. And we walk through the whole the whole deal. We go through all the woods. We see the wood selection. We see like you know we see Paul's up there. We park in park in his parking spot, which is so much fun to do if you ever go to like PRS. Go park in Paul's parking spot and see what happens. It's really funny. Um, we try to we try to do that at, and we did that at um, Taylor Guitars too, I think. And we're gonna do that at Fender as soon as we go back out there. Andy, we're coming for your parking spot. But um, so anyway, the factory. It was just shocking to see like there's so many people on the floor doing so much handwork that the, the sanding and the buffing part of it was just what sort of blew us away. The cleanliness of the factory and the, the overall, it wasn't like, you know, people are having like parties and stuff, but it was not like a dour, sad factory. It was, um, it was a happy factory. People were excited to be making really pretty pieces of functional art is what some people called the PRSs. And this is in the U S factory up in Stevensville, Maryland. But, um, it, we got to meet a bunch of the people working on it. They were all insanely proud of what they do. 
they from the inlay guys to the fret guy because there's one fret guy that does pretty much all the frets for every core in CESC to the guy like in charge of winding the pickups and then we go to the girls that are sort of doing the wax dippings and and they're they've been there for years and this is a job when you get it you don't leave not at the same level as Martin watch that video later it's pretty pretty cool too um, but that's that's crazy. But anyway, same area of the country. But let's get back to PRS. But anyway, the factory, it's, it's, it was an unbelievable experience. We've been to lots of factories. They're not all the same. Um, most of these, the major manufacturers have unbelievable factories and they have it for a reason because you know they are the top lines in the world and they've been doing this for quite a while. They figured out, but this is a fairly new one in the scheme of things from the 80s. So they don't have the history of the, you know, the 1800s or the Fender's histories of like the you know, mid 1900s. These guys, you know, he found this company in the 80s and he started off as a luthier and Paul's like walking around the factory, getting in people's business, tinkering on guitars. This is not what you see normal CEOs doing. They're usually up, you know, figuring out like the big picture stuff. Paul's doing that, but I think he's also, well, let's talk about Paul for a minute. <laughs> Paul's, Paul's a little different. He's a little, he's a little eccentric. If you've been to any of his road shows or any of his um, clinics, as they call them, and met him. He's a different bird. I've interviewed him multiple times. James has interviewed him. It's it's really fun to interview Paul. You never know what's going to happen. He's kind of like your crazy uncle. Um, that's just he's he, he's but he's brilliant and it's frustrating because you know he's smarter than you are, and you know he knows more about or he'll forget more about guitars than you'll ever know. That's what I would say about you know the technicalities of them. Um, kind of like George Groon, he'll forget more than I'll ever know. Um, and it's a it's he's a combination of like you know I like to say he's a he's a crazy Larry Sanders no Larry David meets Bernie Sanders meets Tom Selleck all wrapped into one it's this that's an interesting combo but that's that's sort of the idea of this this crazy but then a brilliant scientist the doctor from Back to the Future he's wandering around the factory let's say getting in the business making guitar still and he's running it you know multi million dollar company he's a brilliant guy working on mathematics with the all sorts of strange other businesses but um that's just, that sort of shocked me just to sort of to know the level of involvement compared to what i've seen before and because i just don't expect that from someone that's running a company that has that many employees that are all working their tails off to build the finest instruments that they can and their output they've had increased to three shifts i believe to get the demand because for the guitars fulfilled at all because when we order a guitar from PRS we're on the outset of for a core piece we're looking at about 12 months maybe 14 months and this is not an artist package this is not which we just got a note yesterday that they're putting on hold for a little bit because they ran out of wood because um, um, they, they're very particular about the wood they use they don't they don't want to have anything that's less than perfect they're as obsessive compulsive as I am about that and more so um, and quick pause because I forgot what I was saying what was I talking about um, <clears throat> the timeline oh yeah timeline anyway um, yeah so like we've had we've had some pieces that are a year and a half we've actually had one piece that we ordered I remember we ordered it golly it just showed up I think we ordered it like a a year and a half ago, we had some on the outstretch of two years. I don't know. At least they're, they're pretty. They're beautiful when they come in. They're gorgeous. It just takes a long time sometimes. So we know their quality control is outstanding. Some of the other major and minor man manufacturers have had some issues with that in the past few years. We know who we're talking about there. Um, but um, the, it's everything shows up. There's no finish work. There's no like weird like buffing like swirling on the, on the top there is there's no fret issue there are no fret issues i should use proper grammar and it frustrates me again because i do not want to like these guitars they're not again i want to play a beat up fender stratocaster i want to play a dirty les paul with a gorgeous top or a plain top or a 355 or 335 i just like that's just the i'm into that but then i what I find with the end of the day a lot of times, I grab a McCarty 594, I plug it into a two rock, and that is like my happy place. I can have a few moments just playing this perfect sounding instrument through a, another perfect sounding amplifier. <sighs> These are expensive toys, um, but they're amazing. And 
and the support we've had from the company, um, Clay in particular, it's been pretty pretty impressive. It's these aren't these major like behemoths that like in we'll get into like you know when you talk about Fender and Gibson and Martin and some of the guys that are even like sort of bigger, they're not that big either. Um, but PRS, like I can literally pick up the phone and talk to head of operations if you need to. You can call your people that work within it. Anybody can just pick up the phone and call PRS. You'll talk to the person at the front desk and they will connect you to whoever you need to talk to, except for maybe Paul. But you can talk to him at one of the clinics and he's perfectly willing to sit there and have talked to you for a long time about the innate details of what goes in his guitars or about deep sea fishing or about the military or about some other random off strange topic that you wouldn't expect because he's very knowledgeable and he's a strange, strange bird that knows his guitars. But um, it's, there's, it's a strange personal touch from this, this company that I was not expecting. And even though it's a guitar that I did not want to like, I have unfortunately grown to love what they do, what they build, the fact that they have their own sort of section of the market. They, they live in this strange, weird area between you know Gibsons and Fenders. I guess they're the number three US manufacturer as far as of the big boys. And, but their guitars just sit in a strange place and it's been fun to get to know it and to learn it and to be able to work with them. But um, it's mainly just fun to play them. I'm a McCarty 594 guy and I love the DGTs. Those are sort of my jams I've learned. of. And Custom 24s are great, Custom 22s are awesome. Um, the Paul's guitar is amazing, but if, if you put in a, I'm still, I still, those are the guitars that get me excited. The, if you haven't played a DGT, David Grissom, um, play one. They're really cool. The controls are different. It's fun to figure it out. You're like, whoa, that does that. And it's just, um, it's a great guitar. If you're a blues rock guy, play one. I don't care if you play it through us, play it through somebody. Play a McCarty 594. Look at the tops. Amazing looking, but just play it. Great sounding guitar. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's why we carry Paul Reed Smith guitars. I'd love to hear what you think about it. If you have one, let us know what you um, what you think. If you why you love it, why you have it. If you've had one and you got rid of it, let us know. We have some. We've had people that PRSs just aren't their thing, and that's okay. Um, I'm still working on tricking my wife. I mean, convincing my wife into letting me get my my first PRS because it's going to be a nice one when I do it. I've already designed it, but um, we're close. We're almost there. I just have to convince her. But um, let us know what you think and share pictures of it if you do. You can do that in comments, everything. Love it. Subscribe or don't. Just thanks for watching. Baxter, Casino Guitars, signing out.